So, uh, thank you, Jenny. So, my name is Owen Brennan, and I'm a scientific officer in the dissemination team at ECA, and I'm here to give you a brief introduction to our database and information sharing approach. So, as mentioned earlier, there are four key legislations for which ECA is responsible, REACH, uh, by, uh, classification and labelling, biocides and PIC. And there are also other upcoming legislations for which we have delegated tasks, such as the OELs, the Occupational Exposure Limits, the POPs, or Persistent Organic Pollutants Regulation, and the Waste Framework Directive. And there are also two key data-related projects which are in scope of ECHA's dissemination, the EU Observatory on Nanomaterials and the EU Chemicals Legislation Finder, which is actually going live in March next year. So, as a general approach, under the legislations that ECHA is managing, industry will submit data to ECHA. In addition, the Commission, the Member States, will also submit data for their regulatory processes to ECHA. And to our own work, we also generate quite a lot of data ourselves. And all of this data is made available on the ECHA website, as much as possible. So a very simple overview. All of this data is feeding into the ECHA data hub. It goes to the dissemination platform, where confidential information is removed. Uh, where it's processed, prepared for publication, and then pushed live on the ECHA website. And behind the ECHA website, there's actually a database system, which is what drives the searches, uh, publishes the pages, feeds you with your info cards, and so on. Uh, when the information is published in the various data sets and lists, it is also generated into info cards at the substance level, brief profiles at the substance level, and is also pushed to the OECD ECAM portal if there are REACH registration data available. But I'll go into this in more detail later on. So as of this morning, what we have are just under a quarter million substances on the ECA website. These are regulated substances, to be clear. So the vast bulk of them are indeed chemicals, but we also have things like viruses, bacteria, uh, regulated dusts, group substances, different things. And for each of these qu under quarter million substances, we generally have an info card, which is a high level summary of all the data we have available, aimed as much as possible at the broadest possible audience. So what you'll have in the info card is the name of the substance, which is the best available name that ECHA has. And this is uh, calculated by algorithm and is refreshed. So whenever a better name becomes available, this will take precedence. We have a little block showing the substance identity, so if it's a single, well-defined substance, you'll get a structural image, a molecular formula. We have a block generated from the CLP data, the classification and labelling. We have a block indicating the properties of concern, so whether the substance is carcinogenic, mutagenic, reprotoxic, endocrine disrupting, and so on. We have a block indicating whether it's uh, available on the EU market in nanomaterial form. Uh, we highlight, important to know, if it's on key regulatory lists, such as if it's subject to a restriction or uh, authorization. And if we have data, we indicate what has been told to us by industry on how to use the substance safely. We have fast links to the key data sets, which we, would be the, the most data-rich uh, portals that we have. We have the full regulatory context of the substance, so we will show every regulatory list in which the substance occurs. Uh, if it's a group substance, such as, for example, cadmium and its compounds, which is subject to a restriction, we will say, my children are cadmium oxide, cadmium chloride, the full list of identified children. And then we will have all the public identifiers for the substances, so uh, names, UPAC names, trade names, cast numbers, obsolete cast numbers, synonyms, etc. We also have translated names where available for about 5,000 substances. Uh, the entry points to this data from the ECHA website are the search for chemicals, which is the main entry point to everything. Uh, here you can search by any public identifier of any kind and find hopefully a relevant substance. Uh, for more expert users, we also have an advanced search, which offers very powerful functionalities. And we have the full picture of everything in the Information on Chemicals tab. And I will show you now what is contained in each of these. So, for example, in the simple search, you can type uh, bisphenol in Cyrillic and you'll get results indicating that it has found a match against the, the UPAC name of bisphenol A and it's found a match from the process-related name from CLP in Bulgarian. Uh, 
So you get your result. And even though it's the simple search, there's a lot of logic behind to always try to prioritize the most relevant result, and it's in general quite good. Under the information on chemicals section of the ECHA website, there are the 70 to 80 regulatory lists and data sets that we make available, and they're organized by the legislation to which they apply. So, for example, under REACH, you have registered substance fact sheets. If the substance is registered under REACH, various other lists from the registration process which are not so relevant. Under evaluation, you have the dossier evaluation status, the substance evaluation or community rolling action plan or CORAP list. You have, of course, the authorization and restriction list, and you have the relevant registry of intentions for authorization and restriction. And you have the same for CLP regulation, for biocides, for PIC, for OELs, for everything. There are in total about 70 or 80 different lists and data sets available. And uh, just to point out that the most important ones, the most data rich ones, are always going to be indicated in bold as a help to the user. And if you put your mouse over the name of each list, you'll get a simple explanation of what, the, what data that list will contain. So we try to be as user friendly as possible. Uh, this is the advanced search. Uh, it lets you, for example, cross-reference substance identity, structural information, regulatory context. So, for example, you could look for a substance which is in the candidate list and which is used in consumer uses and which has classification carcinogenic. You shouldn't find anything, but you can do that. Uh, you can search by properties of concern, the reasons for concern by which the substance is entered in the core app list or candidate list the classification and labeling details and here you can also search by uh, the Cervezo directive so the hazardous industrial chemicals the use and exposure of the substance is powerful it's driven by reach registration data and covers the uh, use categories and use the products articles uh, processes in which the substance is used as reported by reach registrants to ECHA. Uh, one important note is that only public data is searchable so, of course, uses can be claimed confidential, in which case you will find no results. And the same applies to substance identity, structural information to every block here. We try in dissemination to make sure that our data is always cross-connected, so it's easy to navigate where you want to go. This is an example of a substance info card, and you can see you have immediately quick links to the key data sets, which are the most data rich uh, or the most important data sets. So it covers the substance brief profile, which I'll go into later, the reach registration data, the CNL inventory. If it's a biocide, you will see a link here to the biocide data, and you have a link to the PACT tool, as mentioned by Jenny, the public activities coordination tool. Uh, you have links then to all the different regulatory lists and you are free to navigate back and forth from the info card to the list and back. And this is an example of a typical list dataset, the candidate list of substances of very high concern. And just to highlight, everywhere on the integrated lists, if you click on the substance name, you will go back to the substance info card. And wherever you see an eye icon, there is more data available which will be shown if you click on it. And an overview of the navigation is approximately like this. In the center is the substance info card, which you can get to from any of the searches. Uh, you also have a specific search for every single uh, list or data set, where you have the specific relevant search options. And from these, you can always navigate around as you wish to see what you want to see. A brief introduction to our key data sets. So uh, for REACH, we receive registration dossiers containing a lot of information for the substances which are registered under REACH. And companies are required to submit a registration if they manufacture or import a substance at more than one tonne per annum to the EU. And uh, as Jenny mentioned, there are almost 23,000 substances registered. And the higher the tonnage band that is registered, the more data that will be available. <coughs> So there are about 14,000 substances which are fully registered under REACH, which will have at least a minimum data set, and about 2,500 for over 1,000 tonnes, which will have the maximum required data set. Uh, just to point out, this data is integrated with the OECD eChem portal, meaning that uh, it, on a daily basis, the published REACH registration information is synchronised with the eChem portal, and there ECHA has developed for the OECD 
a chemical property search. So on the eChem portal, you can search by scientific properties, so substances by bioaccumulation, which are carcinogenic, which have a boiling point over 100 degrees. Any scientific property in an Euclid endpoint, you can search on the OECD eChem portal. We also, on the Euclid website, make available a dump file of all of this public data, which I will mention later on. And everything that is public, you can browse on the ECHO website live. Wherever we have a substance which is registered under REACH, we also generate what is called a, a brief profile. So this is like an info card, but with more details. So it, it, it has uh, one block, which is the equivalent of every block in the info card, and it always will add more data for, expert, for more expert users. For example, in the info card, you would just see the simplest high-level harmonized classification and labeling for this substance. Here in the brief profile, you can see that in addition to the harmonized classification, REACH registrants have given some extra classifications. You also see a graphical breakdown of what those are. And in the second tab, you have a summary of the scientific properties that have been submitted in the registration dossiers. So boiling points, uh, physchem data, ecotox, toxicity information, everything is available in a summarized form in the scientific properties. And it's fully cross-linked. So if you're interested in one of the endpoints, you can click from here and go to the REACH registration dossier and see the full set of endpoints that have been submitted with all the details that are public. Under the classification and labeling regulation, we have uh, published the CNL inventory. So the substances are in this if they have a harmonized classification agreed at EU level or self-classifications notified by companies in the EU. And as of today, there's just under 150,000 substances. And what you'll find in the CNL inventory is the public substance identity, uh, the classification information, the labeling information, harmonized classification if available, and Cervezo directive uh, data if available for hazardous industrial chemicals. Uh, again, as a standard in all dissemination portals, the search results can be downloaded. And just to note that in some cases you will have diverging self-classifications from industry, so be aware that where it's present, the harmonized classification and labeling always takes precedence. Uh, for biocidal active substances, these are the substances under the biocides regulation where some company has sought to, an to have it as approved, uh, approved as a biocidal active substance. As of today, there's just over 300 substances, and what we have available here is substance identity, a lot of non-confidential scientific data, the legal act uh, which approves it as a biocide if it has reached this stage. Uh, the only thing to note is that the scientific data is not submitted in a structured format, it's submitted as a PDF document. So what you'll find are uh, five and 600 page redacted PDF documents per biocidal active substance. And we're hoping to improve this in the future, but for now, this is uh, all we have been able to do. So there are some other dissemination platform resources which I would like to indicate. We have the European Union Observatory on Nanomaterials, where we highlight data on substances available on the EU market in nanomaterial form, where we uh, include information on scientific studies on nanomaterials that we have. Uh, nano uses, various other data sets that have been made available here. And th this website is aimed at the, the general public, so it has simplified uh, articles, explanations, various things to help people understand nanomaterials. Uh, all of our REACH registration data, as I mentioned, is fully integrated with the OECD eChem portal. And you have a scientific property search, so I rec recommend to check that out. And in the Euclid website, this is the International Chemical Information Database format, we make available a dump file of all REACH registered substances containing the scientific data, which is free and public to use. Uh, we also have on the ECHO website a system where you can sign up to get email alerts on substances in various lists. So you can get an, inf uh, an update if the substance enters a list or is updated when it's in a list. And we have also uh, API web services, which can be used to connect various data systems, if you have them, to our published information. And just to flag that while they're available, they are beta, experimental. Next year, we're hoping to make uh, robust 
data services covering all of our published information to start work on that. And all of the data that we publish is, uh, we try to be as open as possible, as transparent as possible, to make structured information fully downloadable wherever possible. And as our policy develops, this is being rolled out across more and more of our data sets. But just to point out, you're free to reuse the data, but some of it, for example, reach registrations and CLP notifications, it comes from industry. So the ownership of the data still lies with the, uh, the industry who has submitted it. So what you can use, see on the website, can, you can use it as a reference, but you can't use it to gain market access without the agreement of its owner, whoever that might be, depending on your local legal context. And as I mentioned, in the Euclid website, we have made available a dump file of all the REACH study information. So uh, this has been stripped to remove the in, uh, intellectual property data in addition to the confidential data. So what, it, it's enough to use for QSAR modelling and the like. It's not enough to make a full regulatory submission. Uh, then there's the data which is generated by ECHA or the Member States or the Commission. This can be freely used. Just please refer to the source and make sure that the information is the latest published version. And when in doubt, of course, ask ECHA. Here are then some useful links to show the key data entry points that I have discussed. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to your questions.